Welcome back to the channel, my name's Chris. Today you'll learn how to play over changes. Again. I recently did a video on this subject, got great comments, thank you very much. Um, and it was on a specific skill, and that skill was basically this. I'm playing a scale over a chord progression. How do I find notes in that scale that belong to the first chord? And then when the chord changes, how do I find the notes in the scale that belong to the second chord? A very, very cool fundamental skill. In this video, we're gonna take that up a notch and introduce a new challenge. And that new challenge is this. I'm playing a scale over a chord progression. What happens when that next chord has a note in it that's not in the scale I'm using? And this immediately begs two questions. One, A, how do I find that new note and target that new note? And B, are there notes in the scale that are so close to that new note that I should probably avoid them over that chord because they're gonna maybe sound dissonant, right? So those are the two sort of uh, questions that come up from this new challenge. This is a very easy skill to understand. It takes a little time to build, but that's why we're just gonna use two chords, keep it really, really simple. The great news here is that once you build this skill and you can start answering those questions, where is that new note? Which notes should I probably avoid? That skill can remain with you no matter how complex the chord progression is, right? You're gonna use this over the simplest chord progressions and the most crazy jazz progressions or whatever it is your musical preference is. Let's zoom in and let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, our challenge is simply this. A minor seven to D seven. That's our chord change that represents this new challenge. It's a very common chord progression. It's Oye Como Va by Santana. It's Too Late Baby by Carole King. It's been used in funk songs forever. It's, it's just a very, very common progression. But there's something interesting that goes on there. We're gonna be using the A minor pentatonic scale. And let me just demonstrate that. I've got this chord progression in the looper. Pentatonic scale works great over this. Right? It just works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It, it works great. However, if we look at the A minor pentatonic scale, here's the notes from the A minor pentatonic scale and we superimpose the notes from this D7 chord, you can see that there's something wrong here. That F sharp in the D7 chord is not in the A minor pentatonic scale. So even though we can make this scale sound good, there's something we have to watch out for. There's something going on here that we have to be careful about. And as you can see, that F sharp and the G are right next to each other, right? Here's a G, here's an F sharp. They're only a half step apart. This is a G, this is F sharp. If you look at the minor pentatonic scale, that F sharp is not in it, as you can see, right? But here it is, we're proving it out. And that F sharp note is at the top of our D7 chord. That's gonna be a problem area. Because if we play that D note, and we play the F sharp, I mean the G over it, it really wants to hear the F sharp, right? Our ear prefers that F sharp over the G. We can make the G work, but it's a suspended sound. And it works better with that F sharp because it's the third of the chord, all that stuff. So the thing we have to do now is take the A minor pentatonic scale and try to incorporate this new note, right? The note that's not in the scale, but definitely is in the D7. So I'm gonna take a very, very simple phrase, this one right here. This is an A minor pentatonic phrase. Little pre-bend on the G string, pull off, end on the A note. And I'm gonna simply take that phrase and I'm gonna end on the F sharp the second time I play it. So I'm gonna use this over the A, 
and it's over the uh, D chord. <laughs> Same phrase, but ending on that F sharp. There's also an F sharp down here. I'm going to bend up into it this time. Just simply targeting that note using the scale, right? Using a phrase inside the scale, but making sure that I add that new note, that note that's not in the target scale, right? The scale that I'm using to improvise, which sounds great, I just want to add that one note to make sure I target that F sharp, which is, of course, in the D chord. Lots of theory there, but this kind of thought process is pretty critical to being able to navigate these chord progressions and play something that really makes sense, right? When you're sort of bored with just the one scale approach. Okay, the next idea is this. This chord progression, which is A minor seven to D seven. If you think about it from the tonic, it's really like one minor, right? One chord, the chord that's built off the tonic, one minor to four dominant. And the way to think about that is A, B, C, D the one chord to the four chord, right? It's pretty easy to think about. One minor, four dominant. But in reality, if you really analyze this chord progression, this is a two, five chord progression in the key of G. Two, five, one. And the reason that is, is because the G major scale generates both the A minor seven, and the D7. Here's the G major scale, here's the A minor 7 chord, and here's the D7 chord. As you can see, there's no problem here at all, right? This scale, this new scale, I'm switching scales, covers everything. So I can play the G major scale over this chord progression and never hit a wrong note, right? G major. And if I'm zooming around, it sounds great, right? It's a little more sophisticated sounding than the, than the pentatonic scale. But if I end on that G, when that D chord comes around, it's a little too suspended, right? We really want to hit that F sharp. So while that pentatonic scale, we had to sort of alter it, the G major scale, we can play just about anything we want, but notice we still have to pay attention. We still have to be awake. If we're playing a phrase that's sort of more thoughtful, more lyrical, if we're just blasting through, chances are we're gonna be much more successful with the G major scale than we are with the pentatonic scale because we have more notes, we have more color, right? It's a more sophisticated sounding scale. Now, the thing about this chord progression though is I really love the sound of that pentatonic scale. that up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch scales. I'm going to play the A minor pentatonic scale over the A minor, and when we get to that D7, I'm going to just switch into the G major scale. Here we go. A minor pentatonic, G major. Right? 
So I'm saving that sophistication for the D7 because I really like that bluesy feel over the A. Last thing I want to show you is arpeggios. And we're just going to be simply using triads. And those triads are A minor. We're going to play that over the A chord. And then we're going to play D major over the D7 chord. So here's our A minor triad. And here's our D chord. another A minor chord here, and another D, another A minor, now playing arpeggios only sort of gets a little tiresome, right, because it's so sort of in the pocket, it's so absolutely the chords that it gets a little tiresome. It's a little too much from time to time. So what I'm gonna do now is play like maybe a blues lick and then play a D arpeggio, D triad over that D chord. So here's an A minor blues lick. D major chord. Blues lick. arpeggio. That's pretty f effective. Right? Changing it up here. I'm moving things around and I'm trying to think about the things that I like to play. I want to retain those. I don't want to actually just like put anything in the garbage. I want to get new tools. I'm, I'm building sort of a tool box for improvisation here. Okay, so there are a few samples of a way to solve this problem. The problem being that new chord drops a note into the chord progression that's not in the scale we're using, right? So we have to adjust. Use other scales, mix scales, arpeggios. This is a core principle of playing through changes. And no matter how complex the chord progression becomes, as you use this skill and build this skill, you're going to need this core capability, right? You're going to use this no matter how complex the chord progressions get. Okay, so there it is, a new set of challenges, right? A new set of questions provided by this challenge of how do I find that new note that's not in the scale I've been using? Right? And we came up with a few solutions. One is just find the note and target it, land on it during a phrase, right? Then we decided that maybe there's another scale we can introduce that has notes that are common to both chords, right? Gives me a higher chance of success, right? But also we can find and target those notes easier with that more complex scale. And then finally we decided that arpeggios were a great idea because arpeggios always work because you're always playing notes from inside the, the chord, right? You're never gonna play a wrong note. Keep in mind that if you're just playing arpeggios all the time, that can get a little repetitive. So we're really building a toolbox here, right? You're using scales, you're using arpeggios, you're making these choices. Where is that new note? What are the notes I should probably avoid? Tabs for this lesson, as well as every lesson on this channel are on Patreon, that's always linked in the description. Head on over there if you want the tabs, and if you do decide to support the channel, thanks in advance. I hope you found this helpful, hope you found it interesting, and I'll see you next time. Welcome back to the, uh, this is a microphone only, we don't need the guitar. Starting over again. I mean, we love guitars, but don't specifically need one right now, do we? Again, you always have to have a guitar. You always, you should always have a guitar. So that's good. <laughs>